Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing up the Mad Cheese as always. Madden 21 is officially here. If you have EA Access or EA Play, whatever they're calling it right now, uh, you have access to a 10 hour demo, and that's exactly what I got. I'm not tight with EA like that, so they're not going to send me a copy or nothing like that. But ultimately, I'm going to I'm going to squeeze every last minute out of this 10 hour demo. And I'm going to start you guys off, I'm going to start the year off with a really glitchy passing formation. No matter when you get the game, you're going to be able to break the game on day one with some of the plays I'm going to show you right now. Uh, but before I do that, do me a favor, hit the like button. I'm going to be asking for likes this year. I don't typically do that, but I'm really trying to pump this channel up. So every time you guys hit like, share, comment, all that stuff helps this channel out. Also helps out if you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because this year I'm really going to try to get up to 100,000 subscribers. I don't know if that's going to happen before next Madden, but I'm going to do my best. So if you guys could help me out with that, uh, show me some love for all the help I'm giving you guys and show me some excitement in the comment section because I'm sure you guys are excited about Madden 21 dropping as I am so moving on the formation that I'm going to show today is the empty tray stack this is a formation that I was actually labbing uh, that EA, they really changed things around, but I was actually labbing this formation already in Madden 20 because I really liked it then. But the first play I'm going to start off with is the Z under. This is probably the glitchiest play out of the whole formation. And then on the defensive side, we're going to start by focusing on what I think is one of the most improved defenses in Madden 21, and that's cover three. I think cover three is a lot better. It was pretty trash last year in my opinion. So we're going to pick that. The play is super simple. There's actually two different ways to run this, and where you are in the field is really what dictates how you run it. Now, the very first setup, you can see all I really did was I motioned in the X route, put him on a streak, and you're going to see how in last year's Madden, this would have been a home run to the X route. So this is pretty much me labbing this live. You can see right here, I throw it inside trying to throw it away from the cover corner. Typically, that cornerback would have followed that uh, corner route no matter what. So now I'm going to move uh, the ball because, like I was saying, the setup is more specific to where you are in the field than actually how you run the play. So now we have more space to that side, and you're going to see the exact same setup, and look what happens. That time the cornerback bites. So now you can see there's nothing but space between the cornerback and the safety. i got a huge lane to throw to, and sure enough, I'm dialing it up. I mean, anybody could run that. I mean, Mike Evans isn't even really that fast. You can see if, if I had a real speed guy there, it would have been gone even bigger. So like I said, really simple to do, but you have to read the defense to the point where you know where you are in the field. So now I'm not going to motion him out. Out because this is the second way that I'm going to run it. I just want to show you guys right here. You can see right there, the cornerback, once again, bites all over that route, takes it away. That's why I say this defense is much improved because a lot of people are not going to know this small detail when they're trying to set up big plays against cover three. So moving the ball back to the center of the field, now you can see all I have to do is that streak once again and look at the difference. He follows that X route. The Y route is going to be wide open. That's why I'm saying this is an extremely glitchy play because this is something that should not happen against cover three. So once again, like I Set right there. You can see gets outside the cover three. This is kind of old school. I think a couple years back, this used to be the same type of issue that cover threes had. And when I say old school, I mean like Madden 11, Madden 12. I'm not entirely sure, but you can see how consistent this is. It shouldn't be this easy to beat cover three. This is something that everybody's going to be abusing pretty quickly. This is a concept that actually used to be better against cover two. And to be honest, last year when they patched cover two towards the end of Madden, even the cover two covered this better than this cover three is covering this. So this is something I could see them patching pretty quick um, because it does seem kind of, kind of a broken play as I score a touchdown. You can see this play. You can score touchdowns with this play. Either way, it's really just up to you where you are on the field. Like if I move the ball over just a little bit, I could probably get away with running it either way. I can run it the, the first way that I'm showing, like right here where I just put them on a streak. Don't get, show my hand at all. You know, I don't have to make any motions so my opponent doesn't know where the ball is going. Or I could do it the other way from this exact same spot, motion in the receiver, make him the home run route. Like I said, this calls, this draws a little bit more attention to this side. So ultimately, I think the first one I like a little bit better. But this one's probably a little bit easier and a little bit more explosive. So you can see right there, I mean, there's just nothing even close where the other one's kind of dependent on catching, running, and turning up field. Uh, but like I said, they're both good, so it's really up to you. I mean, if you're comfortable making the motion, you don't think your opponent's going to, you don't think it's going to tip your hand too much to your opponent, you can see right here this X route, super explosive. Mike Evans is, isn't even my fastest receiver. He's kind of the slower of the two between him and Godwin, I think. Uh, and you can see, like I say, he's just getting gone. Personally, though, between the two, I like this one. I like not having to make that motion. I don't want to tip my hand at all. So that's pretty much the one that I'm probably going to use the most. You can see it's super glitchy. So scoring another catch-and-run touchdown, we're going to move on to the next play. 
This next one I'm going to show you is still kind of in the lab a little bit. Since that one was very cover three heavy, the fade out is a very good option uh, for a cover two defense. Now, it's also good against cover three. It's very similar as, as the first play that I showed you as far as the motions and everything is concerned. This play can have a very similar effect against cover two and cover three, uh, where ultimately I'm just going to motion this guy in once again, and the Y route is going to typically get outside the cover two corner. If you're all the way to the sideline once again, it'll get outside the cover three the same way, but this is a little bit better of a cover two play as well so like i said i mean you can make that motion you don't have to make that motion at all uh you can see right here if i don't make that motion sometimes this x route gets kind of close to beating that cover two as well so like i said still haven't fully labbed this formation 100 percent as far as some of these plays go uh, but you can see there's definitely a gap there so like i said i haven't fully labbed that but by the time i have my ebooks out i'll definitely have this fully labbed uh, it's definitely glitchy. Like I said, I was labbing this in Madden 20, and it was it was pretty glitchy back then. Uh, but like I said, things changed up a little bit. Uh, so like I said, I mean, you can just easily hit this Y route all day. Uh, it's still a good cover two route. Uh, moving on, I got a better cover two play, an easier cover two play. I'm gonna end this video with, uh, and that's going to be uh, the Y stick. This play is going to be a lot easier. You really have to make one adjustment once again. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's pick that. And then on the defensive side, like I said, we're, we're trying to specifically attack cover two. Um, this is something that, you know, there's new adjustments that can be made to zones as far as depth and whatnot. I haven't really messed with that too much. But that's something you're probably going to have to do to stop this. So all I'm really going to do, put the A route on a streak. Uh, and then this B route out here is just going to, it just gets outside of the cornerback. Uh, gets outside of the press. Uh, so you're going to see, I'm going to move the ball over just a little bit, give myself a little bit more space that was with no space and you can see how it still gets open to the sideline i have i'm going to the short side of the field which typically plays and throws like this uh it kind of you know it makes it harder to do but like i said this is you know cover two to me is really easy to beat this year it's really all about the route if i streak that b route it won't have the same release to the outside and it's going to fail. I'll go ahead and I'll run it like that one time after this play here. Uh, but you can see because of that outside release, because of that, um, he gets outside the cornerback. He doesn't get pressed. He basically gets open. But if, like I said, if I just put him on a straight streak, he runs right into the cornerback. Cornerback forces him inside. There's still a possibility of a throw, but you can see it's just not, it's not the window at all. So, like I said, it's really all about this outside release that's making this particular play successful. As you can see, I mean, it's really just a, a bullet and a pass lead. Uh, and he's just wide open between the cover two safety and cornerback. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Um, hopefully the next video that I put out is a gameplay. I really want the this this year to be mostly gameplay from this channel. Uh, and when I say gameplay, I mean I break down uh, these plays in gameplay. You know what I mean? Like I, I, if you saw my videos last year, a lot of times I would just freeze frame, show you guys what I'm looking at, show you what I'm seeing. That's kind of how I want the majority of this year's videos to be because they, they were very popular last year. But like I said, I mean, I only got a 10 hour demo uh, just like you guys. And not to mention, I mean, I'm going to be hammering out my ebooks. So once those two things settle, it's going to be pretty much all gameplay throughout the year. Hopefully, if I can, if I can keep that up. So just letting you guys know that. Other than that, um, you know, like I said, hook me up with a, a like and a subscribe and all that good stuff. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.